never mind. I'm back from my trip. <laughs> so I saw family, had a good time, and all that kind of stuff, but I missed all of you. So I'm back. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about, you know, my hearing loss experiences and uh, what I did, what I didn't do. Um, you know, I was, I was a little concerned about the, the mini mic and, and losing it or leaving it behind or whatever. But uh, let's talk about the airport first, you know, because I, I'm dealing with a double disability, you know, wheelchair and hearing loss. Um, you know, I had, when I got there, I had the volunteer who drove me uh, to go to the counter and talk to them um, because of the, I was concerned about the noise and because I'm in, in a lower position as well. So even though we got there early, uh, super early, they, they gave me a ticket right away and, and a wheelchair person came and, and uh, was able to take me to, to my gate. So it wasn't an issue. And, and the person in, in the TSA, when we were doing um, the, the uh, pat down, uh, she was right in front of me and stayed right in front of me. So I was able to follow what she was saying in the direction, so it, it, it wasn't a, a big issue. Uh, so, so that was good, and I also had my, my lanyard, and they saw that when I was coming through, so, so they knew there was some other disability, but um, you know, they asked if I had any implants, and I pointed to my head. <laughs> so, <coughs> sorry, I have a, a bad cold, so, um, but I had fun. So, uh, yeah, so I had my lanyard, so they knew there was something something up my sleeve. So, you know, and I pointed my head, and she was like, oh, okay, okay, never mind. <laughs> she wasn't quite sure what that implant could be, but um, that she was fine with that. But I, I heard the TSA security person pretty well, and not an issue. Uh, you know, everybody was, was, was kind, and, um, you know, just the... Because I couldn't, once I, they left me at the gate, they put me in a, a seat, and then when they were boarding, they were boarding and boarding and boarding, and then I had to send one of the passengers over to remind the people in the counter that they had a passenger who couldn't walk. <laughs> so, so the person at the desk was looking all over the place, and I raised my hand and waved, and so she came over and she said, are you mine? And I said, yeah, I think I am mine. So I hand her over my my information and she was like oh yeah you are mine so, <laughs> so she ran over to get you know the special wheelchair and all that stuff that we need for the plane but <laughs> she was um but not a problem she she spoke clearly and you know once you get to that gate you know there's people with accents and people speaking quickly fast and you know they're trying to get everybody on the plane and of course i was just sitting there so so it, it, it was fine that the workers who were gonna assist me, they came over, all three gorillas, and they <laughs> explained and told me their names. So they explained to me how we were gonna do things, you know, and they did it slowly and it, it was great. So not a problem, I heard everything they said, even though they had some accents there going. But, um, you know, I wanted everybody to stay in English so I could, you know, focus on that language, <laughs> so so everything went well. Um, coming back, you know, I had I had my brother talk to the desk and everything else, so so that we were clear, and uh, you know he could speak the language. So I just let him work it through. So <clears throat> yeah, I know I have a bad cough, but it's okay. Um, so that's why this video won't be too long because my throat is driving me crazy. But um, I'm going to stop the video here. So in that sense, it, it, you know, it worked out great. Just doing the lozenger here so I don't die. Um, so, you know, that's, that's how I dealt with, with the counters and, and the airlines and all that kind of stuff. Once I was in Montreal, you know, with family and, and, and all that kind of stuff where, you know, they're a very active family, so they're in the car, out the car, to this place, to that place, you know, so I just kind of come along. 
Um, but my family already knows my hearing impairment, so they were they're very patient and made sure they got my attention before they spoke to me. And, you know, when we were at these long tables, and because um, there was quite a few of us, uh, you know, they, they would send the message down. <laughs> Or say, hey, Lisa, they would wave, and, and then I would you would get my attention first, and then I would look and see what who was talking. Um, or they would tap on my shoulder. There was just a lot of things that they already use, you know, throughout the years they've used with me, so, so they know. Um, or they'll speak up. And, you know, everything was in France, you know, in France, the elegance of France. And so my brother, he, he speaks the language, so he was uh, my younger brother, so he was translating for all of us. And um, I would try to use a little bit of my French that, that I know and uh, let the waiters know or, you know, what I wanted, what I needed. So, so it, was, it was great. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun <laughs> being in a place where you don't speak the language, but most people do both. They do English and they do French, so they prefer that you speak French. Um, they they kind of push that, you know. So so before you go, if you're going to Montreal, you know, just just brush up on your French, <laughs> learn French. So they appreciate that. Culturally, they appreciate that. So um, and and get yourself tuned into you know certain words in, in French. Um, Let's see what else. Overall, I think I, I, you know, I heard, I heard pretty well. What was so funny, I thought that was hilarious, was that um, when I was, I was at the hotel with my sister, my older sister, and I said, "Hey, uh, you know, Jane, do you want to watch something?" What? <laughs> did you, did you bring that thing in from, from my brother? What? My sister has hearing loss. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Sis, you have hearing loss. Huh? <laughs> you want me to say that again? What? <laughs> so I had to raise my voice to make sure I was facing her. And, oh my God, it was too funny. Way too funny. And I just alerted her, you have hearing loss, so watch out. So... <laughs> You know, with my sister, if she if she had her back to me, she she couldn't hear me. So it it was just a reverse. You know, I had to be aware of what she was saying, and uh, I had to be aware in what position she was in, so I could talk to her, because otherwise I would have to repeat things a hundred million times. So it was so funny. So yeah, I talked to my family. I said, this is probably a genetic issue. And it, you guys have to, you know, watch it. So, you know, my brother said, yeah, he, he was checking his and, you know, so, but my sister was way too funny. She was like, huh, what? You say that again? <laughs> oh my gosh, we were all really laughing, but it's not a laughing matter. You know, I said to her, it's not a laughing matter. You gotta keep up with it. And it's, it's really important. I said, it makes hard for conversation, you silly doofus. <laughs> so, you know, and she's used to saying, you know, talking to me, you know, facing me and saying things slower and whatever. But for me to have to do it to her, it was like, oh my God, too funny. But, you know, truly, if you have hearing loss, there might be other family members that might later come down with hearing loss. So. You know, is it genetic or otherwise? You know, you, you gotta pay attention to that. So overall, I would say my trip went well. You know, I used my, all my tricks in the, in the bag. I didn't use the, the Mini Mink 2. Uh, I could have, um, but sometimes the place was too noisy and the Mini Mink 2, for me, picks up way too much noise. So I didn't wanna forget it on the table. So I'm hoping you all enjoyed the eclipse. We also went to the eclipse. We went to a park nearby my brother's house and we had a picnic and uh, we enjoyed the, the eclipse. Um, my brother had uh, rented a scooter for me so I was 
going around, you know, catching up with the family. Um, and it, it was fun. You know, and sometimes I would check out, you know, I would just pay attention to something or take out my phone, you know, because sometimes, you know, all the conversation, the activity, you know, gets a little, it's, it's a little hard to follow 100% of the time. So, so I would just pick up my phone and, and make sure I didn't have any other crazy messages or emails that I needed to pay attention to. So, um, so I would say hearing, hearing wise, it, it, it went okay. Um, in in certainly in the airport went went really well, and you know it's a short trip. It was a very short trip, uh, flight wise. So so in that sense, it, that that was good. That helped me a lot. And and the staff were were very uh, courteous and uh, patient. You know, if I asked them to repeat. So especially on the Montreal side, because everybody has accents. They all have a French accent, most of them. So, and you know, they would come up and ask English or Francais. So, you know, then I would say English, you know, so. So they, and they were okay with that. I think they're not so okay if you, if you try to pass by someone who speaks French when you don't. So uh, it's better to be honest, you know, what language you would prefer the conversation to be in. So uh, it's just a cultural thing um, over there, so it, it was it was a great trip, and um, I'm not sure I would repeat it. it. It all went well. It's just because of my disabilities, it's it's a little struggle uh, to do that. Um, but my family recognized, you know, the efforts that I put into to be there and to share time with them, and um, so so now we're we're thinking of the reverse for them to come over here. And, and to visit me here. So I think that'll work out much better. And uh, for me, at least physically. So uh, so we're, we're looking at that, you know, maybe Christmas, maybe early next year. Uh, they'll come over here. There's a lot of things to do here in Milwaukee. And uh, we can arrange some, some special transportation so that I can just hop in with my wheelchair and, and go wherever they wanna go. You know, whether it's north, whether it's south, yeah, it'll have fun. So in, in those are the things that, you know, you need to be honest with your family, you know, if you can do a trip or not. You know, I think this is one of my, one of my last ones, because <laughs> it's getting harder and harder uh, due to the physical, the physical needs. Um, so we'll see. Uh, hearing wise, it went great. If you all have questions or you know any suggestions that I would have for your trips for your travels uh, let me know and I'll be happy to engage in that conversation because I think I think it's important for all of us to uh, have those good conversations with and fun conversations with family and not to be left out but it, it is too funny when you find a, fa a family member with hearing loss and, and and they don't know it or you know I tease my sister up and down you know, in, in a light way, but, you know, in a serious way so that she would know that um, her hearing loss might, might cause some, some tiredness of other people, you know, it's good for her to take care of it. So, so we'll see. We'll see what she does. Anyway, I hope all of you are, are doing well. Um, I'm not going to last long, very long because of my cold, but um, I'm sure that all of you um, were kind of waiting to see how things went. And uh, I got my bed over there. I, I don't know if I talked about, you know, the process of getting a bed. I did. So at some point I'll talk about that again, about sleep and how to evaluate what you need. Because those of us with hearing loss, sometimes we, we have that issue. And it's important to talk about it with our doctor. Anyhow, take care. I am glad to be back, glad to be back in the saddle. And thank you so much for spending these few moments with me as I um, die here of my cold. But I promise to get better and we'll share some more time together. Bye-bye.